we're going to look at general terms of what CPU from Intel you should uh, consider buying. And uh, I'm going to just go over this in real general terms, uh, keeping it simple for uh, everyone. But uh, we've got a lot of uh, CPU boxes laid out, and uh, these CPUs are all in computers here at the, uh, the workshop. But uh, let's go ahead and get started over here to the left. So actual uh, Celeron G49. This is the, uh, the weakest 8th um, gen Celeron you can get. And uh, honestly, when these usually come paired in a uh, desktop computer system, they usually give you a mechanical uh, hard drive and eight, four gigs of RAM and usually no graphics card, right? So you're going to use that. Uh, it's really honestly difficult to even surf the internet with uh, something that bad. So um, to make that thing useful, you might want to consider adding a solid state drive such as this uh, M.2 NVMe. This will uh, allow you to have much quicker uh, boot up times, read writes, um, adding more RAM, and then even considering a uh, cheap graphics card such as this GTX 750. Now in no shape or form is this ever going to be a good gaming system, alright? So get that, uh, I hope you get that point. Now in between the Celeron and what we don't have here, and I'm going to put up a video because we do have Pentium, um, just couldn't find the box are the Pentium. So they have a G5400, 5420, 5500, 5600, and the G5620. Now all of those um, obviously are somewhere performance wise between the Celerons and the i3s. And uh, you know honestly um, performance wise they're, they're a little better than the Celeron, right? I will give it to them that, but uh, for the price points of some of the i3s out there, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to uh, to buy that CPU when, uh, once again, you really can't game with it. And uh, it's only really, in my opinion, useful for surfing the internet, uh, doing your Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, things like that. You will be uh, highly disappointed, all right? Now let's uh, let us move over. So the i3, so quite a bit of capability uh, with the i3s here. And uh, you know, in this video, um, pretty much got all uh, ninth gen. There are some uh, one eight gen mixed in here, but uh, this, in my opinion, well, these two are probably the best value for your money uh, of any CPU. And if you have a graphics card, this is by far the best deal there is on a uh, CPU. So you can game with these, um, no doubt about that. For the most part, you don't even need anything but the Intel fan that comes with them. So that is nice. Um, of course, using a graphics card like this is not going to really get you into great gaming. Um, throw in something like the GTX 1070 um, you get some decent gaming you might have some bottleneck issues um, but for the most part you'll be uh, you'll be enjoying live gaming with that now along the lines of the i3 so we've got a, a couple of different styles here next you can get into uh, what in my opinion is, is not that great a value though it is a really good processor for gaming, the i3-9350, and this is the KF, so um, let's talk about that, okay? So the K means you can overclock it, the F means it doesn't have any graded graphics, so this guy, I need a minimum of this graphics card to work with it. Now over here we have a 9100F, the F once again means that you need uh, graphics card, so combining it with that or one of the other ones I've got on display here. So very capable, best value until you get to this point. And due to the price of this, there's another one that I, I would consider over top of it uh, just because the capability of that processor overall is much better. 
So let's jump over to i5s. Now, the i3s, you know, decent for gaming, definitely for surfing the internet. And now i5s, we start to get to that point where we can breach into the workstation capability. Uh, so I've got two examples here of i5s, uh, i5-9400F, and this guy, once again, you need a uh, graphics card. There is an i5-9400, which we do not have. But uh, so this has much more capability, all right? Now gaming-wise, you're probably not going to notice too much of a difference between these two processors. Um, you're probably going to get pretty much the same FPS. But now, if you start to do other stuff like uh, video editing, CAD, and then uh, maybe even animation, right? So we do all that stuff on this channel, 4K editing, etc., etc. All of that stuff benefits by a more powerful uh, CPU, more cores, and uh, so that is definitely important to someone like myself. Now, come up here, we've got the i5-9600K, and out of the overclockable chips, this is definitely the best value out there, all right? And there's i5-9600, which you can overclock. Then there's a 9600 uh, KF. There may be a F in there as well, but uh, it's definitely a KF. So KF, would this one would need a graphics card. Uh, you can run this CPU without a graphics card, but will you be able to game very well? No, you're going to need a, uh, a good graphics card. So something like this, you can pair with uh, something like the Asus Tough Gaming uh, Radeon RX 5700 XT, which is a pretty awesome graphics card. And, uh, you know, Though you may see uh, some slight bottlenecking with that, with this CPU, this is an all-around gamer. I had some really good uh, benchmark scores with it. Hopefully, I'll uh, put those up in the video. And, uh, you know, no doubt this combination can do some 4K gaming. Definitely uh, good frame rates for uh, 1440p. So, along those lines, though, now you're talking, um, you definitely need... To invest in a CPU cooler, so the price of these guys goes up. And I didn't mention it with the i3 9350KF. I actually use an Intel fan on that. Uh, believe it or not, uh, I don't overclock it. But uh, you know, this is a sizable investment sometimes. Uh, though you can get some cheaper ones, twenty dollars. Uh, the good ones, you know, are really up there in the fifty, sixty dollar range and up. So. What else, uh, other differences really, since we're talking uh, these overclockable chips? Well, where you might have been able to get away with something like a 400 watt uh, power supply, these require more power than the other ones, okay? So you may have to invest in a higher uh, power supply. If your computer, you're finding it is you're uh, getting heavy into gaming, is rebooting itself, uh, going to a black screen and then rebooting, most likely you do not have a uh, uh, good enough power supply. All right, so uh, we've definitely experienced that here on, on this channel. Um, and you know, it's not hard to uh, create that. One of these days, maybe I will do that for a video. All right, moving over. So now we're really starting to get into uh, the ability to do real workstation activities, video editing, and uh, you know, this is a eight gen uh, i seven eighty seven hundred k performance wise gaming not really much difference uh if this was the i seven ninety seven hundred k you would see probably a few more frame rates per second uh versus the i five but once again this requires more power i don't know if it says on the box uh, i think these are right ninety five something like that okay so you will need more power to run that and it's definitely um, going to pair up good with something like that graphics card and uh, that graphics card so very uh, very capable uh, CPU and uh, the, the concern of bottlenecking is a lot less with those 
All right, moving over. So we've uh, getting to the i9. So I just got this one, i9 9900KF. And to be honest with you, um, gaming wise, not really seeing a whole lot of difference here, uh, frames per second. This thing is pretty darn awesome though, overall for what it can do. So uh, like I said on the channel, if you're gonna do a lot of workstation stuff, this is not a bad CPU to get. Um, I have noticed increases for sure in my uh, 4K editing as far as the processing times go. Those have dropped down and the computer just seems to uh, run Windows so much better in every shape or form with this. Now, does most people out there need this? No. Do you need it for gaming? I personally don't think that uh, most people need this for gaming. I think uh, you'd probably be better off with something like that plus the amount of wattage so um, you definitely are not going to get away with uh, a 400 watt power supply with this guy especially when you combine it with a, a good graphics card so that'll put you up in the uh, you know the 700 800 watt power supply so um, you could basically not that we're going to talk about uh, AMD here but you could apply this to the AMD uh, CPUs as well starting with the Risen 3 all the way through the uh, Risen 9. So hope you got something out of this and uh, I try to keep it pretty general um, just so you guys get a little bit of an idea.